All right, go, mayhem, do your thing. Play the fucking jingle mode. Hello and good evening, ladies and gents, and welcome back to the Football Booth Podcast. Joining me, my name is Fennan, I've got Mayhem with me, and welcome back, I've got Cam as well. How are we doing, boys? How are we doing? Yeah. See, good. Joel's got an alcohol. I see, yeah, I'm doing all right. I see, Joel's got an alcoholic beverage with him, or is that an apple tizer? I need it after today, mate. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a few, mate. There's, there's a few. This is, this is a. It should have been a. So, let's see. Any fucking time we do a treble lately. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Any time we do a treble. <laughs> right, the last, the last one we've got Lenny being appointed in the showers. We can't even enjoy it. And this time, for fuck's sake, 24 hours late with this shit. Well, I'll tell you, well, I thought it was going to be quite a quite a jolly episode because obviously you you made history on Saturday. That's what we do. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, it, there was, there's just been a lot of questions, you know, and and we didn't, we didn't get any answers on Saturday. We didn't have to fucking wait long. We started to get answers on Sunday. Um, but you know we didn't get anything concrete. That put that put a wee dampener on it. Um, not that not that it stopped us celebrating. Um, you know, and a remarkable achievement. You know, Callum McGregor five trebles, only player in world football five domestic trebles. Celtic so obviously world record eighth domestic treble. We've got them trying to count Scottish Challenge Cups and they'll be trying to count their fucking bike in their trophy cabinet now to pretend that they're still the most successful club in the world. They're trying to count all kinds of shit. Lower league titles, trying to get the fucking League 2, League 1 championship all in there. It was, it was beautiful watching the meltdown. Um, and then obviously, you, you know, the interviews afterwards just kind of painted the picture. You know, nothing was said, but it was pretty much said, and then, you know, as we all woke up with a sore head, and then, you know, people being on twenty-hour sessions and a wee bit groggy, you know, early in Cam, to, yeah, to Sunday, Sunday morning, we obviously the rumours right, start right, to really, very much, the rumours start to really ramp up, and obviously today, you know, they've they've ramped up even further, and it looks, for all intents and purposes, as Andrews agreed personal terms with Spurs and said we could be paid just under five million in compensation and the 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 next bit now is deciding who takes over from Ange. Well I saw like well the last I saw it was a verbal agreement that he had with Spurs that he had agreed to take over. And I don't know if it's escalated any further that he's actually agreed personal terms but in and it was yeah, it was like they've agreed Provisional terms. All that needs to be submitted now is, you know, the compensation papers to Celtic, and and that'll be it. So, you know, we're thinking it probably won't be today, um, probably tomorrow. Um, at some point, it'll be officially announced. Um, I think there's some discussions as to backroom staff. John Kennedy's been spoken about going down. Gavin Strachan's been spoken about going down with him. So, whether or not. They want to go and have a crack with him as well. You know, we'll we'll see. Obviously, Anne just was run out of walking into Celtic with absolutely nobody. So, I'm sure it won't be too big a thing either way to him. But um, so I think there's a few things behind that in terms of staff and you know the compensation papers and stuff like that. But it's all it's all formalities. You know, dot and I's and crossing T's. Anne's across the country mm-hmm. will be Tottenham Hotspur manager within the next 48 hours. Yeah, and what feelings are sort of going through your mind at the moment, Joel, with um, Ange looking to be on his way out of Celtic? Celtic, and yeah, we we've we've constantly expressed, and especially you yourself, expressed the gratefulness of what he's brought to to Celtic Football Club over the last two years. Yeah, obviously, mixed feelings. Um, there's gratitude, you know. There's fond memories. Uh, you know, there's there's a some fucking great times. Like some from where we were two years ago, no one last season thought we were we were getting a double, and to follow that up, you know, and make good on the promises of we'll be back bigger and better next season, and we and we take on and produce a treble 
like we said, well breckle breaking, you know, just fantastic stuff. But obviously sad, you know. But it's it's the nature of the game. Um, he's he picked us up when we were down, puts us in a position of strength, money in the bank in the Champions League group stages, as strong a position as possible for us to go out and appoint a new man. I just and you know nothing but gratitude. The only thing I wish is I just wish he'd have been a wee bit and and you can't be like I understand that like he couldn't be at a press conference on Saturday again. Yeah, look. I'm away after this. Obviously, he can't be doing that. But I just wish yeah. he'd have been a wee bit after the game. They'd have been a wee bit more straight up and just, you know, let it be done. Maybe he, was, he didn't want to. He didn't want to take the celebrations away from us. I'm sure you know, there's 101 reasons that he could, you know, formulate as to why he's done it the way he's done it. But you know, someone that had been straight talking up to that point, you know, Martin O'Neill said we want you to stay at the club. Um, it's for me. You know, we were saying all week that. Um, there'd been no contact it's moved too quickly for there to have been no contact before the final so that that for me sounds like bullshit you know we're literally 48 hours after it and things are done dusted mm-hmm. you know so it, it, was, it seems highly unlikely that there was no contact you mm-hmm. know to agree personal terms to go and have those meetings to you know, find out about the values of the club and the foundations you're taking over. They're, they're releasing, and again, it's all speculation and fan accounts, but they're they're, they're releasing that. Um, and Dumbele, he's saying he wants to have a look at him before he decides what he wants to do with him. That doesn't happen over the space of, you know, 48 hours. You know, there there has to have been more to that. You know, these rooms are kicked about for a long time. I think like we've said multiple times I wasn't worried about Brighton. You know, I wasn't worried about the Leicester one. I wasn't worried about where he's been linked. But this one was the one that worried me. You know, Tottenham felt like the project felt like the chance and that was one that worried me and obviously they haven't been able to acquire the people that they wanted you know they wanted potch they wanted nanglesman couldn't get those over the line and dibia and postacoglu has has been called upon and yeah wish him all the best i really do you know you know massively heavy-hearted to see him go but you know Wish them all the best. Don't don't take any of our staff and fuck off with that shit. Don't take any of our players. <laughs> fuck off with that shit. And don't be coming back bidding for Kyogo or Joff. Get the fuck right off. But wish them all the best. You know you, you've got the the riches of the Premier League now. You know go and go and show everyone what you're made of. But don't be coming back for Joff. Don't be coming back for Kyogo. Fucking put that shit in the bin and you know, go, go smash it. But yeah, it's you know mixed emotions. Yeah, and uh, and with you, Cam, I imagine it's more of a conflicting feeling. Uh, as much as there is disappointment, as there is with Joel, with Ange leaving Celtic, I think the exciting prospect of him joining Spurs. Um, w- w- you know, what thoughts are with you at the moment? Nothing changes, mate. Nothing changes. <laughs> That's what the Spurs agenda has done to everyone. <laughs> it's, it's not. You can put. You you you've got you got Jose Mourinho who. Only club to not win a trophy with is Tottenham. You got Conte, the only top, the only team to not win a trophy is Tottenham. And Ange will do what he's what he does at Selwick. He'll play open and expansive football, which Tottenham Tottenham fans have it's about it that they'll celebrate. He's not going to come in and do much. This trans this win, it's not got long enough. The Tottenham team's in disarray. Kane's away. Dembele, I'll, I'll tell you, he's dog shit. Sell him. Well, you don't need to look at him. That's why he's been on loan. He's not good enough. Like he's not. So he's going to come in, have to really... Serie Sir, A winner at Napoli. Yeah, so... Can't, on, can't, be, trophy, can't I mean. be that dog, yeah. can he? So, what does he actually do? The, I mean, the, the, what, how what much does your that... midfield do? You can't be, you can't be nothing, dishing out... Nothing, exactly. That's why we've conceded just... 60, 60, 70 goals in a season. You can't just be saying Ndombele's dog when you're playing fucking I watched him. skip him midfield. I, no, I would, I'd rather play skip him midfield. At least he's a decent crisp. That's about Luck, it, mate. Lucky you're not a manager. Nothing, nothing changes. I, it will be what Poch was at Tottenham. It'll be lovely football, but the, the hope would be to win a trophy. I think Tottenham will do well to finish in the top half this season. Truly, top half. Will... Yeah. No, top ten. Yeah. I mean, they did that you... this year and they were that shit. Yeah, Kane scored thirty goals. He's going. <laughs> so you take them thirty goals away, Tottenham are in a relegation battle. Like even with even with that, that like that, you can tell how the expectations have dropped I'd... already. It, it, it... Tottenham fans need to realise that this is this. They've had their golden patch: the Canes, the Suns, the Champions League finals, the goals that Matip scored against for Chelsea in, in semi-finals. This is the peak because it's a fucking rebuilding stage. Until Levy goes, 
you must bang on like a Man United fan to get the owners out until you, they sell up and you actually get some oil money to back them. You're not you're not going to compete in this league <clears throat> anymore. It's not. There's not a manager better than than uh, than uh, Guardiola in the league. Then you got to look at the team. Do, do I think that Tottenham team can can play football? I barely kick a ball this season. So. Well, it's going to be completely, com- completely tore down, you know, and just going to destroy the five get? at the back. How much money is he going to get? Because he needs eleven well, new players. Well, he's he's not going to get. Daniel Levy's already said he, he's going to have to work within his means in the transfer market. Can, off to Japan we go, I guess. See who we can bring in. But I mean, you know, I know that it's <laughs> it's not what you want to hear, but obviously there's the talk of Real Madrid open and bidding eighty million euros for Harry Kane. Kane will be an idiot. Yeah, Kane... and, a, and a big factor being that Benzema is on his way to Saudi as well after he's announced he's yeah. leaving Real Madrid this summer. You... Kane, Kane can do something that only one player's done. Shearer has scored 260 goals in the Premier League. Why, why I did Spain? I did see, I did see um, a post saying um, Saudi playing absolute 4D chess by signing Karen Benzema. So that Real Madrid sign Kane so that Alan Shearer's record stays intact. <laughs> <laughs> Just let Madrid, let Madrid sign Haaland, City sign Kane, and Kane can win as many trophies as he wants. Haaland's clause doesn't activate for two seasons, though, does it? So he won't Which be getting anywhere next season. Jimmy, it's shit. Who? Haaland. Strong words. I don't. I don't think he's as good as what everyone makes out. He, he does miss a lot of chances. He's missed the most big chances, Craig, doesn't he? He's missed thirty this season. I mean, he should have scored in the FA Cup final. Well, but but we'll, we, we, we we will get on to that. But no, I mean, uh, what Morg was saying is—is have... is it bittersweet? No, because I'd rather one win. I'd rather watch Celtic win stuff. But it, it, it's the, it's the best pick out of a bad bunch, really. I'd have took Potter at Tottenham, but. I guess we knock on and see what Ange can do in the window and then re see there if, if he can bring in a couple of players. He, he needs, uh, to be honest, it's 11 new players for that team. He needs a good goalkeeper. He's going to play, obviously, the in, he's going to play the way he played at Selwick, so he's going to need win backs. He's going to need centre backs. He's going to need Milford, Milford. I think he's going to need a goal scorer. Pedro Parra will be able to adapt that sort of inverted full back. Oh, he's got one out of 10 then. <laughs> but. No, you said a name there. Like I, I don't know if he'd be interested. I don't know what the crack is. I don't know if we'll contact him or if we even bother. But I want my grand Potter coming up to Celtic. I think it would be. Yeah, no, that's that's the manager. There's there's a couple names. Uh, Mine O'Neill kicks about every time. Potter. No, too too old, mate. Take... Take, well, well, I mean, well, this, 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 this is what all the, you know, this is all the smoke that I wanted you guys to sort of say for when we went live. So, I, who take, would you like to take over at Celtic? Well, now? The, the first would be Potter for me, and then uh, Scott Brown probably a bit too early in his yeah, manager career. Early. But someone, uh, I really, I'd like, I, I wouldn't mind a David Moyes if West Ham went on to lose that final Wednesday. That season you, he had. You must hate football. <laughs> oh, like, who else is there? I'm not taking. I'm not taking an American that couldn't understand at least uh, a fuck, small club. Fuck, and I'm not taking. And all. I'm not taking Brendan Rodgers back. I'd rather no, fuck that in the street, So fuck that rat. Just... Fuck Jesse March, Ted Lasso, pish. Fuck that cunt. Yeah, the only thing <laughs> he's good at is shooting is a fucking AR. They're like, like pointless. Americans are pointless. Well, I, well, I hope. Well, I, I know when I when I joined the call before we went live that it was it was a very it was a very divided opinion on whether or not you would take Rogers back no. at Celtic. I know you two are firmly in agreement that you wouldn't I, have him mate, back. I, I can't understand. But I, I I don't know if if people are still in I, shock or if they're in you know if, if the head's still spinning. But this is the cunt that we, we were on the cusp of. Whatever it was at the time, whether it was the God, we, we've had that many trebles. It's actually it was the quadruple and, treble, and it wasn't the quadruple, but I think it was the treble, treble that he was on the cusp of doing. It was in, you know, it was in the fucking wherever it was back end of February, March, and the cunt slips out the back door and fucks off down the road. Right, fuck off, mate. Away you go. Right, you're done. Don't, don't, don't ever come back. But the worrying thing is, and I guess this is what happens when you start to think about it. Right, 
I said this before, there's absolutely no... This rumour has been out there for fucking ages and it hasn't gone away. There's no way that the contact has been post the final. It's happened far too quickly. Brendan Rodgers was in attendance at the semi-final against Rangers for the first time. That's the first Celtic game he's been back to. No one could understand why he's there. No one understood why the fuck he had turned up. But, you know, was there something that... Was there already discussions then? Did, did, did we already have an understanding that... Andrew's probably leaving at the end of the season. Was he coming up to have a look at the team? It doesn't make sense why he was there. Well, it didn't at the time, but you're looking at it now. Yeah, he's obviously... those, those questions are fairly raised now, aren't they? He's, you know, he's seven to four favourite, which is, you know, bookies, you know, and someone throws a tenner on it and, and it all changes, but he's seven to four favourite. So I hope not. I, I, don't, I don't want him anywhere near, and I can't believe the amount of people that are saying. He won an FA Cup with Leicester and he finished fifth with them and he's a Premier League level manager. Fuck that cunt. I mean, he is a Premier League manager. Like he, the, guy's a, the guy's a good football coach. I'm, I'm not saying that. Like The guy is a good football coach, but he's a rat. right? Yeah. And I don't want him... Fuck him. He shouldn't step foot. All this, all that pish about Danny McGrain and all that fucking story and he's a Celtic fan and blah, blah. Fuck off, man. Good, good try. Get in the fucking bin. There's there's the boy from the, there's that fella that the the boy from um Bodo Glint is is being tatted as well. Christensen or I'm, I'm butchering his name, but play you know obviously plays a similar style of attack in the sponsor of football and obviously battered Celtic in Europe this season. So he, his name's being thrown about. That would be that would be maybe a sort of left field. Come, come out of nowhere probably wouldn't be as expensive as a as a Potter or a Rogers or even a Moyes, God forbid. I see Steve Clark was in the running mate. I'd oh, head I'd head but a fucking pencil. Steve Clark. <laughs> I would I would drill holes in my eyes. Like, just utterly terrible names. At, at this point the squad's built depending on who comes in and out. Sabri Lamucci's available. Oh, fuck off. Uh <laughs> the, it, the squad's built at this point, so you need a manager to understand the stature of Selwick, and that's the problem with down south. Is that Michael Carrick like, was eighteen to one? I'd take Michael Carrick. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Uh, yeah, Michael Carrick would be a good he would, acquisition. He would, yeah, he would get a hard time. He would get a hard time coming up because the, like, it's just he the way that, sideways. It's just the way that the Celtic is. We'd be taking middles for a manager from the Championship, and and that's we, we've seen. The state of the fucking fan base at times is is utterly unbelievable. Like, like I said, the fact that people are willing to forgive Brendan Rodgers is actually turns my fucking stomach. So he probably would get a hard time. The fact that you know he's, he's in the championship and he get promoted with Borough, but again he plays that box midfield. He's, he's had a plan for fantastic football. Vincent Company. I, I wouldn't be opposed to now. Fuck that. He's at Burnley Timpot Club. Um, Car- <laughs> plays nice Car- football though. Michael Carrick at eighteen to one would be. Would be an outside bet, but like I said, there's that fellow Chris Johnson from Bodo Glint. There's some decent names out I, there. Keep keep Jesse Marsh away from the football yeah, club. Basically, them too. Keep keep David Moyes away. Keep Jesse Marsh away. Keep Brendan yeah, Rodgers away. You need someone to come in and understand the actual stature of Selwick. It's not any good if someone coming in. People saying, Pe- well, of course mate, he's people leave because Tottenham are bigger. Like, get the fuck, mate. Pe- people will understand the job being being in the job a week. Like you can, you can't tell me that Ange Postecoglou understood the size of the football club walking in. He, he just, he just didn't. It, it's impossible, mate, because he, you know, he's he's a Greek fella that that's lived in Australia, that managed the Australian national team, and then went to Japan. So he knew of Celtic, but there's absolutely no way that that guy walked in and knew the stature of the job he was taking on. He knew, he knew Celtic. They're obviously, were, you know, known around the world as as a both, you know, Glaswegian clubs. But there's absolutely no way that he knew. The, the size and the responsibility oh. that he was taking on. As I mean, manager. he spoke oh. well through his time, but yeah, whoever you bring up, well. whoever you bring up, you know, will will get to grips very very quickly. The, what you this, hope. The, this is this is a team that you have to win every single week. It doesn't fucking matter. You have to win every single week. You know, he's been getting stick after the league's been wrapped up. After the, you know, and we've been putting in poor performances. So even when the title's wrapped up and you're building towards a treble, you're getting stick about losing the Easter Road and poor performances at home against yeah, St Mirren. So that, that's just, the level. People should just get over themselves. 
we're, we're fucking we're getting beat by Real Madrid in in Europe three 0 at home, and people are saying it's not good enough. Fucking Real Madrid are coming to town, so this is the level. You know, you're expected to win every single week, and I know some I clubs mean... pre- some clubs pretend like that's the thing, but like e- literally every single week, this is the expectation. I mean, when Madrid come to town, you don't expect to win, do you? Some people generally do, man. Yeah, well, that, some that, people should stop smoking it. crack before games, then, shouldn't they? Because the problem, problem is that you're still you're still in the generation, mate. The people would would have been watching the Lisbon Lions, Kenny Dalglish, and all these boys. You, know, you still have these yeah. these kind of people, and and that's the that's the you know that they would have imparted onto the next generation. You know, they would they would have watched AC yeah. Milan and Juventus and all these boys coming to Celtic Park and and getting beat. You would have lived through us beating Barcelona. You know that that shit that rings in the memory. So it wasn't what it was twenty years ago. That's what people have to grow with the time. <laughs> Well, not even then. You know, ten years ago, obviously, it was the Barca game. Tony won on that, so it's just yeah, but... things have things have moved on, and you know, Celtic and Scottish football has, has been left behind with with the money and the growth. But whoever comes in, whether it's Potter, an absolutely right field name that I wouldn't mind, and I'm probably going to get shot down pretty heavily here. But again, he, he's highly rated as when he was coming up doing his badges. He's got Fulham promoted, Bournemouth promoted. Scott Parker. You know what? I was thinking Shut about off. Scott Parker as well because isn't he? At, no, he got he's sacked. A, did he get he sacked at sacked Club Bruges? Bruges was it? Yeah, yeah. Ron, Ronnie Dyler come replaced him. Oh Fuck. Jesus Christ! I'm not having. I'm not having my fucking my my fucking saying shut down and you go and Scott Parker. Mate, was, I mean, Scott Parker would at least play attacking football. You, you said David Moyes. David Moyes understands the stature of the club. So does Steve Clark. What's Scott Clark. Parker done? He'd, he'd manage Celtic one week and fuck off to Rangers. Played for West Ham and fucked off to Tottenham. No. I'm not right, if they're, if they're, right, so you two individually. If, cho- if there was... was... Between Rogers Moyes, and Parker. Oh. Right, right. If, no, who would be, no, no, who, who would be your, your ideal... Who would be your ideal Barcelona. replacement to take over at Celtic? Each um, of you. Thingy, I can't remember his name now. Uh, boy from Brighton that played for Chelsea. You mean Potter? Oh, Graham Potter, there you go. Yeah, yeah look, I, I think all, all things considered, you know, who who would I most like? Yeah, probably probably Potter because of you know the the stature and, and the job he done at Brighton, and you know he's he's had the experience and, and the pressure of being in a big job. <laughs> so it wouldn't be alien. It wouldn't be alien for him coming up. You know, to he's he's had that pressure. Um. But I think we'll we'll probably look to be a little bit more niche in who we bring in, um, and I think a, a more realistic target is is maybe your man from like Bodo Glint, someone like that. And there's probably a more realistic target. But obviously the board, I, I think the board, I've known that this is probably going to be happening for a little while longer than you know we've actually it's it's sort sort of dawned on us because I think you know in our heart of hearts we kind of wish that. And Postacoglu, after the treble was won yesterday, he was going to go full Wolf of Wall Street on us mm-hmm. and say, I'm fucking leaving. Um, <laughs> but that obviously didn't happen. No, um, unfortunately not. None of this Martin O'Neill. Martin O'Neill was a legend, but God, no. Like, don't don't take that guy's legacy. Scott Brown, it's too early. Too early for Is him he still to... knocking about at Fleetwood? <laughs> Scott Brown, he is yeah, okay. It's too, too early for him to be. But it seems like it's part. It's quite a familiar pattern, though, of the Celtic board to, like you said, take a right wing approach and bring in an obscure name who, you know, who has done well overseas and has come in and has been like a surprise package, in essence. Yeah, you know, we've done it a few. Obviously, when Ronnie come in, you know, no one, no one. I'd really heard of, of Ronnie Dyler and then he, when he pops up. And Postacoglu was the same. You know, Brendan Rogers is kind of the outlier and Neil Lennon was fucking right field when I was offering him the job in the fucking Shooting. showers. Um, so, yeah, look, we, we, we don't really know the predictions that the usual names will get floated around. Roy Keane, because he's Irish, will be floated about. You know, all, all that fucking pish will be floated about. So, um. Hopefully it's it's just white noise, and I'm sure the board will, will have, you know, a, a list of people that that they're considering and they're contacting. But yeah, just keep the lights of even the lights like Frank Lampard and all this. Keep that shit um, well out of the club, like. 
But speaking of managers, Cardiff have announced their new manager as well over this past weekend. And I mean, just the fifth one this season or something, right? Yeah, might as well be. And just to put on record, never heard of him. Absolutely never heard of him. <laughs> so big name in Malaysia. He's a big name in Turkey. Um he goes by the name of Errol Bullet. Uh he was so he was manager of Fenerbahce two seasons ago. Uh, he's managed two other Turkish clubs. Uh, his record, his record, seems to be on paper really good. He's managed to take these two other Turkish clubs to the Europa League qualifiers. So, like looking at his CV, this is someone that we really haven't. You know, I don't think we've had someone on our books with this sort of prestige in terms of having experience in Europe for many many years I think in, you know if we're looking at you know if we're looking at managers accomplishments the last the last name we had was probably Neil Warnock with the number of promotions he's achieved over his career but from overseas um, Errol Buller has seemed to have done very well out in Turkey but of course, there's that sceptical feeling of how he'll adjust with it being his first job in England. And the championships are, you know, it's one of the toughest leagues in the world. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. And especially with the transfer embargo on top of that, if he can bring in any reinforcements to the squad and how he can work with what he's got on his hands already. And... But from what I've read about him, it seems like he likes to he likes to play like a high press sort of system where we're pressing the back line. He doesn't everyone and their dog these days. Pretty much, this is purely what I've read. Uh, he likes to play with a shape that is familiar with the way Cardiff play as well, with with um, two holding midfielders and then an advanced midfielder with two wingers, and then you have your sole striker. So. Like I said, like on paper, he looks like a very good fit for the club. But at the same time, he's his first job in England. I just hope that he can adjust and adapt quickly, and the players and the, you know the, the squad as a whole can adjust to his philosophy and just see where he can take us. Like yeah, you know, I was saying earlier to the stew, like if we if we finish mid table or you know around eleven, you know tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Essentially, it would be it would be a successful season for Cardiff right now because the state the club is in. Like we were, we were very fortunate to stay up last season. I know a lot of people would say that purely based on you know mathematicals, where if Reading hypothetically weren't deducted those six points late on in the season, then yes, we would have gone down. But at the same time. If Reading had not been deducted those six points, we would have taken a different approach into those final two games against Huddersfield and Burnley, where we would have played a stronger side. We would have taken it. There would have been a lot more of a serious approach going into those last two games, and the outcomes of those two results could have been drastically different. But yeah, like I saw, you know, know, like if 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 you, you know, if you. Granny Abbo should should be a grande and all all that kind of pish, you know. Um wow. people people float that shite about, but at the end of the day you you stayed up. Um I, I just I mean I, I don't know if I'm coming at it from maybe it's it's naive. Like I said, I look out for Cardiff results and, and I, I honestly have an an affinity towards them. That's through you and doing this pod and, and I honestly want to see them have, have success. But, you know, Lamucci comes in and does the job that's asked of him and then they, they put him in the bin. I I, I don't quite understand. And I didn't realise this guy had been at Fenerbahce, obviously, you know, a big football club. You know, that would have come with the world, you know, the weight of the the Turkish world on, on his shoulders. You know, being at, being at, you know, one of those those big clubs, you know, Fenerbahce, Galatasaray, you know, huge, huge rivalry and expectation that, that comes from those clubs so I don't think he's going to be phased coming into the championship you know obviously if he, if he if he has that background I think he's going to be more than capable of you know imparting himself and and asking the players to, to go about things in a certain way and he's not going to be phased if things don't go right straight away but I mean we just whenever you talk about Cardiff you just end up going back to the same thing just 
like, what, what, what's going on? Like, why, why do you employ someone and say, here's the job, go do this job. They do that job, and then they go, I wish you all the best in your future endeavours. Wait, where's the stability? It's Vincent Tan's logic. Like, I, you know, I was, I, was, I was sitting here two weeks ago asking the same questions you you just asked now. Like, I don't understand why Lamucci wasn't given the extension. I think, like you said, he achieved the task that was given to him, and that was to keep us up. And I thought going forward, he got a good system going i mean by all means yes we won't get results week in week out consistently but at the same time to make what is you know it's, it's a drastic change to a squad as well like like six, think about, six, like six 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 months isn't a long time not at all but think for about a manager like yes you're not getting results week in week out but cardiff city at the state that they're in at the moment simply and the, the truth of the matter is you're simply not going to in that league you know you're going to be bumping into the the Lutons and the Middlesbroughs and the Coventrys and and all the Prestons and Millwalls that are, that are just there and there. But you're going to be bumping into them every other week. So you're not you're not going to go on that consistent run. But you look at the games that you had to win, right? That like must win games, right? Big games where you must win. And I think that's the mark of a manager, right? Must win games, big moments. Blackpool away gets it done. Rotherham away gets it done. You know, big performances at home to, to secure championship survival. That That is the mark for me of someone that can call on their players and get the most out of those players. Right? You, you, there's just no way that when you're playing Coventry's and Bristol Cities and as hard as it is to hear at the moment, even the likes of fucking Swansea, you know, that have just got a structure in place and, and are settled and that that mid table like that that's a stretch, but those big games with those teams in and around you, yes, exclude Huddersfield because you was already safe and they were battling for their lives. So you know, it's a dead rubber to use. It's it's their cup final. It's difficult to to gauge that. But these big moments in and around you, you know, you should have beat Wigan, fucked that up, but didn't lose. You know, these big big games, you just go out, you just don't lose, or you go and claim all three points and and that secures survival. And then at the end of that. The logic is, well, this guy performed in all the big moments of the season, but he didn't beat fucking Luton and Coventry, so we'll let him go. What, what the fuck? No, but it, it baffles me. And, you know, like you just mentioned there, the big games, like Bristol City, he beat Bristol City at home. We, sh- we should have come away with a point against Swansea, and they... They managed to scramble away with three points in the end because that first half was shocking. Though. The first, the first half was awful, absolutely but then, awful. But again, you know, the, the mark of a manager is can you identify when things are going wrong and change it to improve? Exactly. And, and we managed to overturn that horrible first half. We were two 0 down, and we we managed to bring it back to two all. And then they get a dodgy free kick in the ninety sixth minute when there was four minutes added on. Like we won't go into it too much, and they get a scrappy goal from that. I, but, I just think it's nuts that this guy that, that has, has been successful in the championship to a degree, you know, qualified for the playoffs. Almost you, qualified for the playoffs, yeah. No, oh, did he not make him uh, foul? He, yeah, he, no, because no, he, he, he fell, yeah, they fell right. away on the last so, day of the season. But again, was, like one fixture, one fixture, was, fine was, margins. Was competitive in a promotion push in, you know, in a sleeping giant that had been in the Premier League and come out and struggled to get back sounding familiar and you've got that locked in he's done his job you know probably thinking all right if i come in here save him then i can have a proper crack at this next year and what i imagine has happened is obviously they put him on a temporary contract he's done his job he's gone into the renewals he's asked for a little bit too much and they've gone now fuck this bend him and just rolled out on this new fellow this is it i mean it (sighs) I mean that's all speculation. Can yeah, you can either confirm or deny, but but the speculation that, was the like. speculation was even more scary in the build up to Errol Bullet's appointment because the names that were being pulled out, the like the the odds on the bookies, like the scariest name that I see being pulled out was Steve Morrison coming back. <laughs> I'd like, I'd... And it wouldn't have surprised me at all if Vincent Tan had decided you know what yeah we you know we you know we we made a mistake here we're going to bring you back in like I think you got a harsh deal 
like this is the thing like because I didn't want him sacked essentially but like I said you know to bring him back in the state that we were in and like the way like you know because we had we had I felt what we had evolved under Lamucci in some sense and to bring Morrison back in and I just felt like it just would have been like you said it it would have been bittersweet but at the same time, like I, think, I, like, think I just there's names there's names out there that, that would have made fun. look. Look, we can't judge this fella. Right? Like I said, you know, Fenerbahce is a big football club would, mm-hmm. would have come with a lot of pressure. But even someone like what's your boy, like Michael Duff at Barnsley, that has yeah. gone in there done done a fantastic job. They were brilliant in that playoff final, down to ten men for for the majority of the second half and all of extra time. And Josh Windass pips him in in the very last minute of extra yeah. time. You know, obviously he's, he's another season in the league one there. Playoffs are finished. Would it would it been worth a punt? I think so. He's done a fantastic job there. You know, so th- there's there's plenty of other people like th- this is again. You know, th- this is probably one that would be shut down if any Cardiff fans are listening to it. But you know, Robbie Nelson. I, I always thought he got a real tough go of it at Hearts. So I thought he'd done a fantastic job. There, there for many seasons. Yes, he's an absolute bam up prick that has absolutely no fashion sense, and he's a moaning boar bag. But you know, you, you're trying to get performances out of fucking Robert Snodgrass. You know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a different level. You, every any time you get a decent player, they just get absolutely pinched. You're looking, obviously, the boy that's now at um, Brentford, the the Scottish left back, Hickey, had him, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then gets pipped. Suter gets pipped straight to. Straight to Rangers. So, any time you get a decent player that's showing any kind of form or talent, that they just they just get taken away. So, I, I think he done a fantastic job to achieve what he achieved at Hearts. Hearts fans had it out for him for ages for whatever reason. But you know, I think there's people out there that make it a wee bit more sense. But look, you can't can't be um can't be too gun ho. You know, no, of course. Obviously. You know, I, I'm very, I'm very. There's very, there's very few names that I would really shoot down right away before getting behind them when they, you know, been in the job one day. Like the last manager, I was like that with was Mick McCarthy. I thought it was a terrible appointment from day one. Like it should never have happened. But this that's is just, that's just someone that's phased out of. This is it. Like you know, if, if they, if they, if, the if yeah, if they bring in Martin O'Neill with Celtic, like. At one point in time, decent, but it just just phased out. This is it, like, and you know, I think, you know, give the credit where it's due. Like, the board did sit back and assess, like, you know, what potential targets there were available in and around, you know, not just England but overseas, and the fact, you know, like that they. You know, Tan said no to Lamucci for a reason. He obviously had his reasons. I don't feel I agree with him, but probably because he dressed in fucking beige or something with that cunt. Right? Oh, Vincent Tan can't. Of all people, can't fucking talk about fashion sense. So probably be something fucking stupid. Like. Yeah, it'd be ridiculous. But you know, but the fact that they actually sat back, they they drew up a, a list of candidates and they explored you know, very excessively in terms of who they wanted to take over next and give this manager, you know, a summer under their belt, see what they can recruit in and around the squad with whatever accessibility we have to the market and just see, you know, how, I mean, this is it. Like, it'll be, they'll be, it'll be assessed over the first six months or if it's the same case as Steve Morrison, the first 10 games. So it will be, it'll be a bipolar outcome. It will either be the case that you know things are going really well with Bullet, or he'll be out the door by October, November. But again, you know, like to not even be linked to it. Like that's what I mean. Like I know Cam shot it down, and God love, there's any Celtic fans they're probably slating me horrifically. But I wouldn't be linked with someone like Scott Parker or so uh, at Cardiff, like. Like he's out there. He's obviously just been sacked. Yeah, I'd take he's Scott on... Parker at Celtic, at Celtic yeah. or Cardiff, even. Yeah, like th- that re that rebuilding that rebuilding phase. Like for Cardiff to not like again. We, again, we, I guess we don't know the the contact that they've made, but n- no links there. And it just everything just comes 
so fucking left field out of nowhere. Like, oh, like there's no real build up, and then bang, there, there's an announcement to Cardiff. It's as if like <laughs> Tan just, you know, fucking threw it up on Indeed. This guy applied, and he went Funabachi. I know Funabachi. Come on down. Yeah, and Cardiff and Cardiff Twitter is wild as well. Like the the you know, the last few days, I was convinced we were going to have some Portuguese manager takeover because. He did well with a obscure Portuguese side. Um, had recently got promoted with them. Did well. Had a tight budget, and and that, you know, and then it was like rumored that he, you know, I think it wasn't even rumored at this point. He like he had agreed that he was leaving at the end of the season. This Portuguese club and Cardiff were monitoring this situation. Like it's honestly, like it's fucking like especially. Well, I mean, Twitter in general. Like if you. It's whoever, whoever you follow, yeah, whatever team you follow, like it's absolutely wild. What I love the most about Cam t- in this episode, for anyone that's audio listening, is he's showing just how much he despises England by rocking that retro Inter shirt. <laughs> we're, we're all we're all Inter Milan, aren't we? Unless you're born in Manchester, because you only support City if you're born in Manchester. You're born in London, you support United. And you've given me the perfect transition. Well, if there was any like other football action that we have to discuss, was the FA Cup final between City and United? And I think the best way to put it, we've got you know, in the sense of Guardiola, it's two down, one to go to achieve a prestigious treble this season. But Cam has clearly made his allegiance known as to who he will be cheering well, on we, next Saturday. We know he would have been watching the game. Because it was a United game, so oh, he would have been dragged into it. Yeah, dragged into it. So I'm the stone, my mate. Dragged into so much, it. I got to the pub, ordered a drink, turned round, and won the up. I said, might as well go home. Then see bad and for sixteen some, minutes or some fucking goal. Jeez. It's oh, a Christ. fucking finish oh. by Gundogan. Absolute minutes. finish. And then fucking. Wan Bissaka heads the ball backwards, and somehow Jack Grealish is giving his handball and just fucking. Oh, the rules! So I thought, I thought that was that was Manchester. such a shit decision, and the fact yeah, and the fact that KDB should have had a penalty given I on him after I that Fred challenge. I thought I was in Manchester, mate. The, the way the pub exploded, and I've got people that have watched football for about four years trying to tell me that's handball. Firstly, you've never played the game. Secondly, you don't understand the fucking rule. His arm's coming down. It's not well, handball. No. The problem is, at the moment, oh, that is the rule. I mean, it? it's the, the rule. The, I mean, it, it spoke volumes. When it, obviously, I, I started watching at half time. I had better things to be doing than, than watching the FA Cup final. Like scratching my balls. Um, yeah, I shut up late to the pub as well, honestly. But, um, <laughs> so, I started watching at half time, and you've got you know the likes of Peter Schmeichel, one of the best goalkeepers to ever do it, you know, of a decorated footballer and Micah Richards, who, you know, he's just a big funny man, isn't he, that played for City, not really Good a decorated haircut. footballer. But you know, they're, they're all Good in one. they're all in the the studio saying that they didn't think it was they they wouldn't want it to be a penalty, but you know, the way the rule is it is, because his arm but, was raised. Mm-hmm. The, the thing it, is VR makes him go and look at that. Fred Fred just hacks Kevin De Bruyne down in the box. We don't look at that again. Well, they did look at it, and they 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 stuck with the the decision. He's a fat fat little fuck. They've had to hear over the last nine months he's the best holding midfielder in the world. Goes studs up, down someone's leg. Yeah, that that was a horrendous tackle. And I thought, you know, it's a good tackle. And they all agreed in the... Well, I was giving them credit, but they all agreed in the studio that was a yellow card. They're like, yeah, I think this was a yellow card. Then I see it. You're like, oh, what? <laughs> the fuck do you mean? He's halfway up his leg. What are you I talking mean, about? I mean, when, when you boil it down to Man United fans, big this up as we've got to stop them from doing the treble. We've got to stop them. We've got to stop them. They turned up you, nice you, in their bucket hats. You didn't show up. You played like shit. And I'm watching people combine the, the 11 and getting six Man United players in there. Are what you're talking about you one? What six so? players are they getting in there? Are you are you not talking about the ninety nine? Are they not combining no, no, the no, ninety nine? No, 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 They're talking about this season, mate. Oh, I was right. gonna say ninety nine, fair enough, but this season, this what season. six players did they manage to squeeze into that eleven? Some, some can't add Wan Bissaka, Carl Walker, <laughs> Bollocks, Varane, 
Yeah, bollocks. Marnes. He had Shaw, bollocks. He had Casemiro. Bollocks. Had, <laughs> no, look, look. I think Mar- I think Martinez has proved a lot of people wrong. I think I think he's had he's been injured, but I think he's had an all right season. Yeah. Would, would I would I put him in but, over a City player? Probably not. But I think that's no. the most credible shot. But, but he's had he's C- had a good season. City don't have a left back. He's had a good season. City, City don't have a left back, so I'd, I'm sure as as much him. as he is an absolute tugboat. No. And he has an absolute Greg Sausage roll walk in. That's no. the only reason Luke Shaw gets into that no, side because City hasn't. don't have a left back. But the Mate, fact I, that, like, I, if I'm if I'm doing a combined eleven, there's there's no way I'm taking Nathan Aki over a, an out and out left back, and that's wow. the only reason. Because Aki's shit. Well, he's conceded less goals in the Champions League final when he's won two trophies. I'm not even sure. He's I'm put, not even any Man United playing player. Playing at City. If you put Luke so? Shaw, if you put Luke Shaw in at left back at City, he wins those trophies as well. Nathan Aki is being carried by by the team that he has around him. It happens in it happens in every team, right? It happens in every team. You get bang average players, and these fantastic scores. You get bang average players that are carried. It happens all the time. I mean, you know, the, the funny one to point out is Gary Neville. Look how decorated he is, right? And he'll tell you, he'll tell you himself. You know, he was a he was an average football player, but the people he had around him, you know, dragged him on. And you, you can go through and, and pinpoint that in 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 all of the championship winning teams and all the teams that have we're going to Sergio Busquets is so decorated. You're telling me that guy's a world class footballer? No, he is a sideways parching merchant, bang average football player. That he was just absolutely so fucking lucky. Had Iniesta, Messi, and fucking Xavi in front of him. I mean, he's one without them, but yeah, yeah. But I mean, like he. I mean, it's it's as, not as if he's then all of a sudden started to play with shit players. You know, he's playing in that Barcelona team, but most of his trophy hall, and he's playing with fucking I'm not I'm, world class players in front of I'm, him. I'm simply not having a Man United team. They got battered seven nil at Anfield. Marnes proved everyone wrong when when Salah turned him inside out. Like, yeah, like everyone's. I'm not saying. I'm like I'm not saying he's world class. I'm saying he's, he's had a good season. Everyone has a bad game. That whole team capitulated. Uh, at Anfield, that whole team capitulated. I'm, I'm not having. Do you know what? I'm not having Man United have a good season. They finished third of a shit trophy and got battered like four or five times. Oli Gunn Solskjaer had a better for, season than Tan Hag. It's, it's a fact. For them, for them, it's, it's a decent season. Obviously, no, like, it's not. Their, their aim, their, no, their aim. They're the, they're the biggest club in world football. Yes, yes, hundred percent. But their aim. So you've you've got to take it from, you know, perspective is a massive thing. You know, so you've got to take it from where are they at at the moment? Yes, they're the biggest club in world football, but you've just told me that not a single one of those players in that team gets into a combined eleven with City. So Only can't, can't they can't second. Comp- yeah, they can't you know, compete. They can't compete for the title. How many how many players from that Man United team get into Arsenal's team? Very few. So I think that. You're talking about they've finished five? as high as they could. No, not five. Don't talk shit. Well, Shaw gets in. Wan Bissaka gets in. Shaw, doesn't Shaw get in. does not get into that side. No, no, oh, oh fuck over, off. Shaw not does over, not get into team. that team. Tierney is over him. Tierney and Zinchenko, no. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. Fuck you're off. You're saying that Luke Shaw is better than Zinchenko? Yes. Every day, yeah. twice on Sundays. You need to stop the Copperbergs, mate. T- twice on Sundays. Casemiro. I have never seen Luke Shaw pull a huddle into the middle of the field and talk yeah. to players. What did he do? He, he fucked the league. He fucked the league. Casemiro, Casemiro would get into just, that team. You just told me that Aki right, was a great player because he'd won all these trophies. Zinchenko's got double those <laughs> amount of trophies. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He lost Arsenal the league. Shit performance right. Anfield. Brought the huddle in and fucking they we're, lost. We're off to Wikipedia, boys. You're telling me that Zinchenko doesn't have double the, the trophy hold. Wikipedia, you not got bare source. I can't wait for this call to end. You look like a helmet. You got some good right. source if you're saying fucking Shaws, Benton, Zinchenko, and no. Tierney. So, well, so what have we got? So we've got Aki as three Premier Leagues, an FA Cup, and an EFL. So you're telling me it's three Zinchenko so doesn't. Have... So it's he's not double then, is it? I don't know if you pass my. Well, wait, I told, I stated that Zinchenko had won double. Nathan Aki, five major honours. Zinchenko. Ten, so I didn't pass the mass cam, but that's double. So I appreciate your time and your dub you're talking. But four Premier League titles for Zinchenko, an FA Cup, four 
EFL cups. And... Oh, four league cups. Wow. Well... What was it? What, what, what the fuck are you talking about? Wow. Fucking one of Aki's is a league cup, so we're discounting that, you fucking dickhead. Okay. And well, and, and a beautiful community shield. But anyway, major yeah. honours. If, not, you feel, if you're counting the community shield, that's 11. If you're not, it's 10 and it's double. So, I'm you know. Not, I'm not having not having a bang average left back. You, you, you was about to have Aki. He's a better player. The honours say different, mate. Okay, Cole and Cole's got a Premier League medal, so he's a better, better player than Harry Kane. Great Truth. point. Great point. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Fact. <laughs> so we're, one, we're talking about... One, one we're talking Right, but we also can't compare Carlton Cole and, and what? Kane because Kane's never played at Chelsea and what? never been in the team competing for the league. Zinchenko and Aki play for the same team. That's why yeah, we can compare. And one got moved to a team that one got moved and then got moved into yeah. a position he doesn't play do, because they do, don't do need you know, Do you know why Zinchenko got moved on? Shao Cancelo, not Nathan Aki. What the fuck? What are you talking and then about? He went off and now he's feeling to the team and see yes. Bell without him. Because Shao Cancelo threw up a huff. Sanchenko got moved on because of Shao Cancelo. If Cancelo was throwing us up this huff at the start of the season, Sanchenko never moves on. No, nah, he would. Yeah, he would never go to Arsenal if Cancelo for a shit fit at the start. Sanchenko would absolutely still be at City if Cancelo for a shit fit at the start of the season. So, you just can't take Luke Shaw over. K- KT plays 10 games a season. He's a better fucking player than that guy. Wait, he's not because he plays 10 games a season. How many games has Luke... Is it, you're talking like Luke Shaw's played every game this season. No, he hasn't. But... Um, whatever. Then you're still... I'm still going five United team. Five United players in the Arsenal team. How? Who else? Who else? Who else would you put in that Arsenal team from United? I'd have Juan Pesaka over Ben White. Ben White's Fair. not right back. Fair. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think Ben Juan is um, that good, but fair. Um, yep. Under your logic, surely Marnes gets into the centre back partnership. This is a good season. Over Saliba and Gabriel. I'm having over, over Gabriel. When I'm over Saliba. I'm having two midfielders. I'm having Casemiro. And Casemiro, having yes. Fernandez. I'm having Rashford. Who? who, who, who you can't. Have, you can't have Rashford. What who do you mean can't have Rashford? Because Martinelli's their top goal scorer and they finished second. Rashford's got thirty goals. Thirty goals in what? In all competitions. Right. Well, fuck off all competitions, here, mate. Like we're, we're talking about in in the Prem. Like, like that's. He's like, got more he, goals. More Rashford's got more goals than Martinelli. Stat I'm up bill. front. Why would you play him Wait, so you'd have yeah, so you'd have Casemiro over Thomas Partey, I'd imagine, and then you'd have Fernandez over Xhaka. Yeah, because Xhaka's a dog. Yeah. And I'm having Rashford. And Rashford over Martinelli. Yeah. Okay. That is some crazy claims. Well, I think it's that crazy. It's definitely crazy. You might as well have Wikipedia as a safe tab, Joel. It's not crazy. How's so, it crazy? So Marcus Rashford for his two goals more than Martinelli that finished second and actually put up a title challenge. No, 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 no. They didn't put up a title challenge. They <laughs> bottled the title. It was a very big difference. <laughs> I mean, has has words ever been spoken more as a Tottenham fan ever? They wouldn't. They led the league for ninety three percent. I'm not having it. <laughs> Joel, you put. Tell, Joel, you, why do you put fifty p in? In my... you're just telling me. It. You're just telling me that United have had a shit season. They have. But United putting, are the biggest. United are the biggest team in the world. But you're putting yeah? Rashford in for scoring two more goals over someone that finished second. He scored two at, more goals and at least pushed. No, they didn't push them. Well, they did, they up, did. Until, no, they didn't. up until April. No, they led. There's a very big difference, Joel. There's a very big difference. They didn't push them. They were top of the league for 247 games. They were top of the league for 93% of the season. They were 11 points clear in April. They didn't push them. They were there. They had won the league and fucked it in four games. There's a very right. big difference. Okay. So we're talking about someone that led for 247 days in the Premier League and then fucked it. To a player that 
held fourth place for 200 days and then got into third and were pushing Newcastle? I don't understand your logic here. What, what, what season would you rather have? Be top of the league and lose to City or not even have a chance and finish third with a trophy? I mean, be top of the league. Well, you're fucking stupid then. So Celtic were top of three. Top, <laughs> Celtic, Celtic were top and lost and threw the league away. You'd you'd be like, oh, it was a good season. No, because we're talking about Celtic. But, what uh, we're talking, what we're you, talking about here is the English Premier League. So you're you're telling me your your team has been top for for ninety three percent of the season, and you would think that's an achievement to throw the league away? I'm saying it is a more successful season. How is it battling between third and fourth? How is it points? Was- Points, points. To, games points won. Who, okay, who finished second in 2010? Did you say what the points win? Who, who, fin- <laughs> who finished second in 2010? I don't know. Who won the league? Exactly. Who won the league? United. I would guess Chelsea. Well, Chelsea or United. Who, won in, who finished second in 2009? Eight, seven, six, five. Because no one matters about second place. Will you tell me who won the league? I think I could probably guess. It doesn't matter. If you're winning the league, it matters. It don't matter how time you how many times you led the league and lost. I'm I'm not saying it does. What we're what we're arguing here is who's had a better season. United have won a trophy. You just tried to discount Zinchenko's four league cups. Because this is what English people do. They're happy with mediocre trophies. I mean, there's been so many one eighties here, Cam. I don't understand. <laughs> You can't either. Rashford banged those goals in in a three month spell. Apart from that, pretty quiet. He's got more goals, though. So, more goals, more goals. And third is with better a trophy. Than... <laughs> okay, with, with, with a trophy. With a trophy, and he's got to an FA Cup final. And finished second in that FA Cup final, which you just told us means nothing. But okay. So, two goals, third, and an EFL Cup. I mean, are you Rio Ferdinand in disguise here? No. Instead of instead of being in... Yes, look, they, they bottled the league. No one's arguing that. No one's arguing that. But do you want to be so far away you were yes. never anywhere near? Yes. Because wow. this will never be lived down. Wow. Because this will never be forgotten. In North London, it'll be forgot by everyone else. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, of course it will. Yeah, of course, of course it will. It, the team that was top in April that threw the league away will be forgotten. Yep. Yeah, of course can it you, will. Can you, can you tell me the amount of times that Liverpool done it, being top of Christmas, coming into Three. January, February? Three times. Do you know the team to only do years? it more times? Arsenal. The years? I don't know. Well, yeah, you've forgotten. They Good were point. 11 points clear, were they? <laughs> I don't know, mate. I don't revise Liverpool fucking points. I'm telling you, you've forgotten. You've forgotten. That's what I'm telling you. It will be forgotten everywhere other than fucking North London. Of course it will. It will. Yeah, it will. Yeah. The derby is... That that derby is fucking weird. That derby is weird as fuck. Like, Arsenal having that St. Tottenham's day and all this shit. Like, celebrating finishing above each other. That is Tim Pot shit. It will be forgotten everywhere. As soon as the ball's kicked next year, City, City were there. Arsenal were second. Yeah, it won't. Yeah, fuck, it won't again. yeah, it won't. It won't be remembered next season. The same way that they try and punch, like Arsenal fans try and punch that Leicester shit. At use. I mean, those gifts that, are fuck. No, they they punt the one that Chelsea won us over. But no one else gives a fuck. I couldn't even tell you what you're talking about, and neither could anyone else in the country. We'll see, won't we? We will. If this pod is still going in four years, need to bookmark the day. <laughs> famous season of 22 23. And we'll all be like, yeah, that's the year that City won it. Right. Ask Cam in four right. years' time. How many points did Arsenal finish on in the season? You, that know the not, you act like it's not a massive thing for a team to be top in April and to lose the league title. It's never been done before. Yes, look, no one's saying they didn't bottle it. But I mean. You, you're, what you're saying is that finishing third and scoring two more goals means that Rashford's had a better season than someone that finished second and was top up until April and scored two less goals. He has. In your opinion. In, in my opinion, it's not. And that's why I'm putting across the, the argument. 
I mean, it depends what it comes down to. Do you, so, you, so you picking we'll, up personal so, accolades or, a, so, or the overall team performance? So when he looks back, because you literally just said no one will remember it, Rashford will look back on a, a winner's medal and he'll look back on nothing. So he'll remember it for that. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe in, in some people's in some people's logic, winning that, you know, the League Cup would elevate him to to having a better season. That's more of an argument than scoring two more goals. I never said he had a better season because he scored two more goals. I mean, we can roll this back. Oh, whatever then. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> if that's, if that's what you took it from it. I, I think... Overall, if you would have given United the chance to be where Arsenal were in April and they would have to give up their League Cup, United would have took that opportunity to be in with a chance to win the Premier League, yeah, which, they haven't, any, which they haven't been. Any team would have, because they were eight points clear. Yes, and they fucked it. But you're talking about a team that's come from where? But no, no, one, no one even had them in their top four. No, like Mikel Arteta should be manager of the year. Oh, he should, he should, for what? For, for the almost. season that he's produced. It's like going out, speaking to a girl for nine hours, and still ending up wanking with your own hand. What's the point of it? There's nothing to it. You, you're you've an almost that, man. You've laid that groundwork next year. Exactly, you fucked it. Guilty. You, right. <laughs> I think the job. Next I think year. The ne- job he's next, done has been... next year. You can bookmark this next year. If Arsenal finish in the top four, it is a great season for them. They will be sixth. They have not got the squad depth. They're selling players out bang average like Xhaka and Partey because they need to get depth for other players. They are not good enough. They overachieved to fuck. Saka's had a world-class season with 12 goals and 11 assists. The kid's bang average. He is bang average. He will be remembered for missing the penalty at fucking West Ham and missing the penalty in, in a European final. That is all that boy will be remembered for. Like that they've overachieved to fuck, and there are Arsenal fans have just believed the hype around the club. The players are not good enough to be where they were. They had of so many teams you would, Of course, off. you would believe the hype if you haven't been in that position for nearly two no, decades. Of no, course, no. you're going to believe it. Of course, you're going to get caught up in it. Like I, I don't like Arsenal fans, like the way that they run their mouth. But I think this season of all seasons, they're <laughs> they're allowed to be. A little bit no. hyped up. Yeah, you're allowed to be hyped up, but you don't tell them you've won the league until you've. You don't print. Look at this. Look at the shirt they released. Yeah, golden. Yeah, I know. I know golden. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Did you think you've won fun. the league already, boys? Releasing yeah. that top. <laughs> because what silverware yeah. had you won? <laughs> That's when you win, saying You release golden bits. No, I'm, I'm with them on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you celebrate get back into the Champions League. <laughs> The 33 that grand probably personal, is it, yeah. The, the personal highlight was the 33 grand ticket for the, the game at home against Wolves that ended up being a dead rubber. <laughs> no one's saying they didn't bottle it. But... Just for me, I think they've had a better season. Yeah. But look, look on our last note, like City go into next Saturday, Champions League final against Inter. What could potentially be a club's most historic season since the 99 season that United managed to achieve like I mean I mean what are our predictions going into that game Game. I think I think that City go with his huge favourites I don't think anyone would argue that um, obviously after their performance against Real Madrid I think they're, they're huge favourites um, but you know, Italians are renowned for being, you know, tactically astute and, and tough to break down. And I think that, you know, Inter have proved over the last couple of years, yes, they haven't done fantastically in the, the Serie A this season and obviously AC won it last year, but, you know, they're back in that kind of title winning mentality. Um, so I think they're, you know, they, they'll be solid defensively they've got the likes of Barrera in midfield that, that's a work you know an absolute workhorse you know and then the likes of Lukaku the Dzeko Martinez up front goal scorers so they'll, they'll carry they'll, they'll carry a threat um it's a big ask from them you know City on their day are probably the best team in the world yeah no I absolutely agree and what a feat this would be 
for Guardiola to achieve this treble of the of the Premier League, the FA Cup and the Champions League. Not only will it be Man City's first Champions League in their history, but especially Everyone's put himself through watching that utter shit show that was Seville versus Roma. No. I didn't actually watch the game. I watched but the highlights. I, I mean I I saw the clips afterwards. As in the clips at the fucking airport. Yeah, good. Fuck them. Fuck them, mate. It's, the, 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 referee, the referee's appalling in the game. Mate, the game's out of control. And obviously he's lost control. I'm I'm watching it and thinking, honestly, my, my understanding was like, fuck me. I would not want to be a ref in this game. Anytime you blow the whistle, you're surrounded by six, seven people. Like, it, yeah, it, it, the game's just out of control. No, I, I don't give a shit what he's done, mate. He doesn't deserve that with his family at the airport. Well, fucking, you know, get, just you for not buying him a private jet. You see, you see what Jose Mourinho standing at the car park again. Yeah, that, well, I think that, that's that's, that's what, what really encouraged the fan behaviour at the airport, wasn't it? There's like... no need for that shit. I mean, Roma, Roma were decent in the first half. They were shit they, in the second half. Should have had a penalty though. For what? The handball. What is that? The one like in extra time? Nah, it's the one in the first half where he moves his arm towards the ball. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Too his arms like I don't know if I get it. It'd be like I'll well, stand up for you. Demonstrate you. His Ooh, arms, okay. sorry. his arms are down here, and the ball crosses in, and he goes, whoop, just whoop, and he hits it there, and the ref goes, nah, goes to the AI, and he's like, nah. But in all fairness, a big, big, a big t- talking point is a uh, Ross County uh, Pike Thistle game. The ref went to the monitor, kept his decision. Good, good on him. Back, back <laughs> he, <game>. was shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was shit. He was shit. We actually got to cover that game as well. Oh, that game was mad. <laughs> yeah, I said to, I, uh, I, they went. It was three 0 when they scored. I went to dad. Uh, I might put a fiver on this guy into penalties. And he just looked at me and I'm like, I'm only joking because every playoff game goes to penalties. Fuckers went to penalties. Like... I'd have picked Park Thistle to win on penalties. I'd have still lost, but you know, three <laughs> one. Freedom down. Aye, mate. Istanbul, mate. It was utter madness. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was unbelievable, mate. It was unbelievable. Oh, three nil up, mate. Party this were in party mode. Seven. They they, they were three nil up in seventy minutes. And they, they had twenty and they, minutes to hold on. And they dumped it to Ross County, mate. Mm. Fucking hell. Malky Mackay is Ross County. Dear yeah. Lord. I wonder what racist slurs are coming out of his mouth. Allegedly. Everything well, we we, I'm sure we won't repeat any of these on this platform, but No, of course <laughs> not. I will. What? Oh well, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. know what? I thought of a great idea for a final segment. What's and I know, I, word you know. <laughs> no. no, because uh, me, me and you, Mayhem, did it last week. But I would absolutely love to see a game of football tic tac toe between you, Mayhem, and you, Cam. I'd absolutely love to see. I'd love it if you yeah. did it. I love it. Should we? Should we pull it up? Go on, Cam. Go on. So just Google. just one game. Just one game. Just one game on on. On the recording, and then plays many as we want afterwards. Football tic tac toe, and then go to the second one. Well, I actually have to go. What is this shit? Oh come on! Yeah. I'm so bad. Come on. And then Football. I'll um tic tac toe. And then I'll yes, yeah, the second one. I'll... Then I'll put toy the football players. Huh? Toy football players. No the... football tic tac toe. Yeah, am I join? Can I join as well? Is, is, this is it able to have play, free? Play online? No, I don't, I don't think. Right, I put the link in the. Oh, link okay. As well. So click, can you click the link, and then that far that four letter that four code numbered code or lettered code above it is how you get in. Right. So they have to play for Liverpool and that's it. That's a bit better. You happy with that? Yeah, sure, mate. Right, right. go. It's noughts and crosses, if you didn't guess it already. Is it, is it, 
When is it my turn? It's your turn now. <laughs> Clicking on. Oh, you have much to learn, young grasshopper. You scroll down, and search player. Why is it saying it's it's your turn? I'll skip my turn. It's you, mate. So search player. You search the player, and then you click on the box of what of what it's applicable to. It just says it's still not your turn. So what the fuck do you keep doing? I've no idea, mate. Skip I've turn. No, right, I've skipped my turn, so it's you now. Why does this keep saying it's my turn? <laughs> I don't think I... just says zero's waiting. <laughs> What's happening? Should I change? Have I changed? What team am I? I'm X. I don't know what's happened here, mate. I don't think you're in the right one. Get the room. I sent the... Right, go, go on. Talk. Wait, set up a new one. I'll see if I can try and join. Right, that's the code for you, Mog. Right, there we go. I'm in. All right, let's see. We've got Celtic again. World Cup winner. <laughs> That'd be <Huh>? easy. Ah? <laughs> mate. It's loads. Ah? Uh? Cup winner. Loads. Alright, well, let's, you know, let's learn to walk before we start running. A World Cup winner that's played for Celtic. A Celtic player that's played for Napoli. I'm struggling, mate. Not gonna lie. A World Cup winner that's played for Celtic. <laughs> Fuck, did Gabriel not play for them? I thought that uh, the Brazilian defender Gabriel played for Valencia. You mean Gabriel Paulista? Well, that may have been him. <sighs> Fucking hell, that's a struggle, isn't it? Oh, what year were you born in? That one? 98. Oh, God. Right, so you think Gabriel Paulista. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Yeah. yeah. No, I can do dirty like that. Um... Valencia and us. Napoli and us. What is it with the Celtic ones? I can't do the Celtic ones. So France won it in 98, Brazil in 2002. Oh, I don't fucking know. I wonder, was Janinho part of their squad? In it seems like a long shot. He fucking was. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> that is unreal. <laughs> fucking Janinho this, Janinho that, cool. Um... <laughs> Valencia and Celtic. Who's played for Valencia and Celtic? I wonder. Where do, no, I think I'm from Lazio. I'm gonna risk it for a chocolate biscuit. I think it's wrong. What was? It? What? What? Huh? What? What? what did Carlo you de Canio. <laughs> Play for Napoli and Celtic. Beautiful. Now can I rack my brain and find a Spanish player? Was, was no, he wasn't there. Has it been on recently? Oh, I don't know if you were there. Were you there? No, you weren't. Shit. Um... Oh, mate, you do well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like... What year? 12 to 13, but I mean... 12 to 13? 12 to 13. Oh, on loan. To what? Celtic? Yeah. You, you do well because he only made two appearances in six years at Valencia. Ah, oh, maybe. He was on loan to us 12 to 13. I don't even remember any fucking Valencia players. Because he wasn't from Valencia. <laughs> so you're talking about... You're talking about, like, 2012 is when they died. Is that a striker? I don't know the fuck he plays, mate. I hope does, not. Does, does it begin with R? No. No, he's a striker. 1985, he was born. He was on loan to us. Yeah. He scored two times. Miku! Miku. <laughs> <laughs> mate, do you, wanna, do you want me to rattle off his appearances, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we go. Not playing anymore. <laughs> it's exiting the room. I'm glad. I'm glad it was you and not me, Mog. Not, not gonna lie. Me too. Uh, there was never a Celtic one then. 
How the fuck was I meant to get Miku? Mate. You have done well. He's got Wikipedia up, Mog. You never closed it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck anymore. No, we're finishing tonight's episode now. What a fucking part. Oh. I couldn't even, I couldn't even name a Napoli and Inter player. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Brain's frazzled. Oh, no, right. That's what happens, mate. When, when you start to lose, like, your brain starts to fucking... That's it. Rattled. It Absolutely rattled. But look, we're going to... We're going to call it there. It's been another fantastic episode, as it always is. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me this evening. Pleasure as always. Indeed. Everyone who tuned in, listen, thank you very much. You can catch all our episodes over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Audible. If you'd like to catch the live recordings, head on over to YouTube at our YouTube channel, The Football Booth. And whilst you're over there, like, subscribe if you're new to the channel and ring that bell for notifications. And until next time, ladies and gents, I bid you good night and the star.